Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Marvel Monday. This is going to be a unique uh, week. I thought a pandemic was uh, already strange enough, but it's snowing here in Oklahoma. If you're watching this back later, we're all stuck at home. Lots of ice, stuff like that going on. So I'm actually streaming for the first time from home. Steven is stuck if you were following his saga to get out onto his land. Uh, he is stuck out on his land. I, I can actually see outside right now the snow is still coming down. Uh, so today will be interesting. Uh, who knows what's going to happen? Uh, this is all new tech that we kind of set up uh, last minute. We only had so much time before the snow was going to hit. But thought if we could do it, we may as well try. So uh, some, some fun stuff planned this week. Today is Marvel Monday. Going to be playing Marvel Champions LCG solo, uh, which will be fun. I, I have a history as someone who enjoys playing heads up competitive games. So that's what I grew up on. That's what I played most. Um, and so uh, I enjoy Marvel Champions solo way more than I thought I would be capable of enjoying a game like this. So um, it, it's actually an incredible solo game. I played it last week solo as well. And using this opportunity to uh, test cards and heroes that, uh, you know, most of the time we're playing at two player and we're streaming Steven and I. Um, but before the pandemic, did a lot of three player and my valuation of cards is definitely different in those formats. And so I know a lot of people, I asked last week, how many people play, you know, solo, two player, three player, so on. And the vast majority of people said they were playing solo. And so, you know, even just picturing as a designer of this game, how you approach a game, knowing that some people are going to uh, be playing solo and some people are going to be playing four player and some people are going to be playing heroic and some people are going to be playing standard. Um, so that, that, that's just a crazy, I can't imagine being a designer for this game, but all that said, as a player, I just get to enjoy it. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, what I felt I'm compelled to do uh, is get my friend Bruce Banner, uh, Hulk, back on the table. I just want to see what he's like in solo. Um, there's been some new cards that have come out that I'm, I'm really, uh, I think, help him. I, I, I don't think we're there yet. I, I still think he's one of the least, unfortunately, one of the least powerful, least consistent heroes in the game. But it's fun to try, and we'll, we'll just see how it goes. That's the first test I'm going to run. But particularly, um, I'm, I'm kind of obsessed with this card, The Power in All of Us. I think this card is particularly good. As it's a double resource for neutral cards, basically. Otherwise, it's a wild. So I think it's particularly good for heroes that uh, don't have giant hands or have access to a lot of great resource cards. When I think about Captain America, he's got that super soldier serum. Uh, he's got two copies of it. So he, he can really ramp out uh, without many resources going in, especially when you're playing expert and solo. The time you have to ramp is, is a lot harder. Uh, but this card is obviously really good uh, with cards like Helicarrier and Avengers Mansion. And we finally got enough good neutral allies that this card would actually be good. And they didn't give this card to us until we had those allies. Like the new Spider-Man Miles Morales ally, I think is amazing. Same with um, Ironheart. That's, that's weirdly one of the like most consistent high value cards in the game. Cost two, you get a card back immediately. You can use her ability and then block with her that round just getting quick value out of her without taking taking a lot of spots northern lights saying hulk mania running wild that's right that's another reason our very first game of champions was at gen con 2019 feels like forever ago and uh i was i don't even know who i was i was playing spider-man i think i was playing spider-man um but i was really uh there was it built up to a hulk moment the ally the whole time uh and it was a, a great <laughs> a great game but I, i've always um I've always loved Hulk in general as a character. Um, and Spluce saying his webcam looks blurry slash smudged, but whatever. Are you talking about the table cam? Just checking it out. We're obviously on new technology. So also have the cards been popping? Like when I say pa the power in all of us, is that coming up on screen? Um, it's, it's really amazing what we're doing to get this to work. You would be shocked. Uh, say my face cam. Well, that's that's interesting. Well, if the table cam's good, that's good. Um, as far as I can tell, the face cam looks looks fine on my end, but uh, you know, we'll we'll look into that. I can't really look into it right now because we're we're in the middle of being live, but we'll we'll see what's up. Um, everyone's saying the pops are coming. Uh, yeah, for sure. Okay, cool. Uh, so I'm playing Hulk Aggression, and there's a few things here. Again, I, I'm using those neutrals. So you have the Hulk cards, and then key neutrals are 
some of those new allies, Ironheart. I'm actually playing Lockjaw. Um, Hulk particularly has low hand hand size, so Lockjaw and discard pile is just a guaranteed way that you can use your uh, limitless strength. I think is the name of his. Yeah, limitless strength. Um, and he's a physical resource, so you can use him to trigger something and then play him play him from camera. So uh, we'll we'll see how it goes. I'm I'm gonna start with. I know it's crazy. Um, it, it's what I have built. So it's, it's what we're going to do. And I, I kind of just want to see it. I'm going to start by playing against Ultron. Ultron on expert mode. And I'll get my board set up and everything here. And I got to make sure these are all positioned correctly. Um, this is what I was playing last week when I was playing solo. But I, I kind of just want to see how he does against uh, something like this. And then from there, I already have a Spider-Man. And he, that is also using the neutral resources and spider woman deck built. She's not using the neutral resources. She's not really built for that. Uh, so I'll probably play a game or two with Hulk. We'll see how it goes. Um, and then we'll kind of go from there uh, and see how much time we have playing solo. It's, it's always hard for me to judge, but when I did the solo campaign of rise of red skull, it went way faster than I expected it to. So you never know how many games, especially with my decks pre-built. I was building last week on stream. I'll be able to get in before we dive in. I'd love to check in. How's everyone doing? Uh, where are you watching from? I used to I used to check that um, for basically every stream during the early pandemic, but I'm curious how the weather is wherever it is that, that people are are watching. Thomas saying face and board cam aren't great. That's fine for the first time at a home stream. Um, yeah, I'll let me check that out really quick. I just want to see what kind of quality we're at. Popping in uh, a second, and I'm also curious how many how many people are um, have been playing solo during this crazy weather. I feel like every time I play this solo, it's like this is actually a surprisingly great game, um, given given the circumstances. Yeah, I'm looking. YouTube is a little blurry. Oh wait, it's at 480. That might be why. Okay, table cam's not bad. Uh, it, I mean, it's not as good as it normally is. So that's something that we'll definitely look into. I'm curious. Uh, again, we're, a, we're in an entirely new territory here. Uh, do SYL saying, hello from Maine. Uh, you are getting all of our snow. Yeah, we are a lot. Christian saying, Copenhagen, Denmark. That's amazing. Snowing and it doesn't look like it'll stop anytime soon. Gearing up for my first Quicksilver play tonight. How's everyone enjoying Quicksilver? I had a really good time playing him last week, but he's also crazily, he's crazy good. David Whitfield saying, I've soloed every villain and expert with the marvelous Captain Marvel. Uh, that gal does not disappoint. Yeah, she's also really good. Chris Hodevac saying, I love Quicksilver. Vincent saying Quicksilver is very good. I'm very excited to get Scarlet Witch in finally. If you're in the US, that doesn't come out. I've seen a lot of people asking because they've seen it released in the UK. That doesn't actually come out until the first week of March. I think that's the right month, yeah. PMK saying the angle's a little off on the table cam, but everything is in frame. What do you mean by off? It is a little slanted just because of how the cameras are set up. I don't have the like overhang equipment. Jason uh, saying, I'm still loving Spider-Man. Yeah, he's one of my favorites. This is, that's part of why I wanted to play. Also, I, I have uh, Green Goblin Mutant Formula built because I'm going to play that with Spider-Man slash Spider-Woman. Zag saying, Zach, I've received my Archive 800 from you guys. That box is so awesome. Yeah, it was amazing. I showed it last week on camera and uh, we immediately sold out. So I, I believe we're working to get more of those as soon as we can. What up, Great White? Northern Lights saying Quicksilver is my number two favorite now. <laughs> Brandon saying for a last minute setup, you've done a fantastic job. Appreciate that. Um, yeah, we. I just happened to have some of the stuff. I was getting ready for um, like... I had a couple of friends that I was wanting to play games over webcam with. And so I just happened to have some things, um, but like 
the equipment I would have for us to actually stream would be different. And like, even just the ability to have a, you know, the camera above in the right screen, um, in the right place and all that kind of stuff would be super helpful, but, uh, kind of working with what we had and had like a day of time where I could still get out and get to the office, um, and then get back home. And we, we also didn't know how bad it would actually hit or how long it would go. So we just didn't, didn't, uh, <laughs> did what we could basically is what, what we're working with here. Uh, let's see, Jason saying, am I watching WandaVision? Absolutely. Last, I won't spoil anything because people may not have seen it yet, but that last episode was fantastic. I also heard the next three episodes, the last three in the season are all an hour long each, which I'm super pumped about. I'm super excited. Michael saying, any idea when the cosmic boards will be back? Uh, yeah. So part of the problem right now is that we're, we're iced out. So uh, we've, we've been trying to catch up since the holidays, um, but also you just can't really get out in Oklahoma right now. Um, and so like manufacturing is happening slower than we want, receiving stuff's happening slower. So we're working through all that. I would definitely sign up for the wait list on the website for any products that are out of stock. It's just a general thing. You'll basically get an email as soon as those come back into stock, as long as you're on that wait list. And the, uh, those, are, those are things we're actively making all the time. So if we're ever out of Cosmic Tokens or any of the products that we make, uh, we're, we're, we always are trying to keep those in stock. And so we're out specifically, the alarm bells are ringing on our side and we're moving as fast as we can. What up, James? Happy to have you here. Hope you're doing well, man. Grant Sanderson saying, you should join Marvel Champions Playtime on Facebook. Uh, we play all the time via webcam. Got in a three-player game this morning. Yeah, I, I think this is definitely a game you can play uh, in webcam mode, right? As long as someone's managing the villain, I, I think it's pretty easy to do. Japan in himself saying, what's displayed behind you? So this is just my shelves uh, with stuff that I own on it. So books and collectibles and trophies and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> Ian Schaefer saying, I've wondered if Zach wears, I've always wondered if Zach wears black tees at home too, now confirmed. <laughs> I do have a lot of black shirts. This is my standard stream shirt. Um, my mic is actually at home. I have a mic that's like mounted up on the table. So it's not like on my lapel, like the ones in the studio are. Uh, that's typically why we wear these shirts specifically because they have a slot where you can actually lapel them in. Um, but yes, I do own a lot of black t-shirts across the board. Uh, let's see. Brendover saying, Zach, have you played Quicksilver Aggression yet? No, I haven't. But uh, Bryce, who's the one responsible for popping uh, cards up on the screen most of the time, um, was telling me just before we went live, that he tried, I think, Quicksilver Aggression with Jarnborn uh, this weekend and with the Friction, whatever that Friction card is, um, super good. Obviously, it's just an incredible number of resources, and every time you're ready, you're just doing two free damage. It's, it's pretty wild. Tzak saying, is Steven, uh, Zach, is Steven okay out in the country? As far as I know, uh, he's doing fine. He's got limited internet. That was kind of the last thing that was getting set up, but he does have, like, hotspot ability. Um, but it, you know, we, we actually played a game of flesh and blood this weekend over the webcams just to test some stuff out. And, um, it, it, it was good, but his, his internet quality is definitely not like, like I'm on fiber, so I'm capable of streaming. Uh, but hopefully his internet will be good enough soon that we could potentially, if we ended up in this scenario again, uh, actually stream us both playing at the same time. Philip saying, I have a question about the, uh, Marvel crisis protocol character subscription. If I subbed like two weeks ago, did I miss anything after the inhuman? So Basically, as soon as you sign up, anything in the future will be coming, whatever TBA says. Um, so I, I think the things that are about to come out, I can verify really quick. Uh, if you didn't get charged, so there's a, a tab in the back end right now that is orders. And that's like you ordered your subscription, uh, et cetera. If you click over to subscriptions, you'll be able to see as well what's active. Uh, and you click into your subscription, you can see what you've been charged for. But the thing that came out this past weekend was Black Bolt, Medusa, Crystal, and Lockjaw. So you definitely, if it was exactly two weeks ago, you would have missed that by three or four days. And then you should be on the list to get whatever uh, is coming out next month, assuming there is something coming out next month. P. 
BMK saying uh, just an odd, odd different angle. Yeah, so typically when we're playing cooperative games um, on stream, actually when we're playing competitive games, this would be a similar angle to what we would do so that it looks like you're looking at the table we're playing at. But uh, in cooperatives, we typically actually switch it around where you're seeing uh, what we're seeing, basically. So this is a little different than normal. But again, this is my home. Uh, don't necessarily have the like truss going over us to mount the camera where it would actually look like either straight straight over or looking like you would uh, typically on our streams. Retro Daniel saying, uh, normally they have a setup that costs several thousand dollars, I'd assume, versus their, this setup. Uh, yeah, so this is definitely, <laughs> uh, it would be funny to send a picture of, of this setup compared to the typical setup. It's definitely night and day right now. What up, Delta Loco saying, just got here, Solo Hulk, brave. Yeah, nothing if not brave. I don't know if that's true, actually, but uh, I like to think so. All right. Looks like I pretty much caught up to chat, which is good. <laughs> t saying iPhone taped to a stick. You, you know, uh, you're not far off, at least on uh, some level of, of what's going on here. <laughs> That's awesome. OK, so I'm playing Bruce Banner. If you've never uh, seen him before, pop him up on the screen. He's got a four recovery. He's got 18 health and a hand size of five. So it's pretty typical of six for most alter egos. Um, that, that's one of the common complaints about uh, Bruce Banner. He's got very low hand sizes. Uh, PM Cameron and aggression. So his ability is experimental research, action, draw a card, choose and discard one from your hand. So you don't net a card, but you do get a filter, filter out your hand uh, more efficiently with him. 18 health, that's a large number uh, for a hero and four recovery is pretty good as well. Um, second best in the game to five, which is the biggest we've seen, I believe. So flipping over to Hulk side real quick, he has no thwart. Uh, so he's not going to be scheming much. He's just a puncher. Attack of three, defensive three. So he's good at attacking and blocking. And then he is enraged. When your turn ends, discard your hand. So you play all your stuff. You basically can't hold on to a card going into the defensive turn or into your next turn. He also only has a hand size of four, which makes him uh, quite a challenge to be uh, to interact with. We'll go ahead and read the Crimson Cowl 1A. Cause mysterious red hooded employer is really the genocidal android Ultron. Setup, I, I uh, it's the modular set I'm using is bomb scare uh, for reference. Put the Ultron drones environment into play. Shuffle the encounter deck. Advance to stage one B. One B. When revealed, each player puts the top card of their deck. Uh, engage with them face down as a drone minion. So I'm gonna put that over here. Let me look at my camera just to make sure it's on screen. I'm gonna put Hulk here. All right, and then. Uh, we're we'll going to read the Ultron drones environment. Each face down drone minion engage with a player that has a base or has a base scheme of one, base attack of one, and base hit points of one. After a face down drone minion is defeated, place that card in its owner's discard pile. So basically, all these cards in front of me um, come in as one one ones. T Zag saying, Zach, last question. Are Arkham Holiday tokens going to make one last return to the store? So, as far as I know, those are gone. Um, I, I think we put them in stock and sold them and they did sell out pretty quickly, but the, the pace at which the waitlist was building uh, wasn't enough for us to necessarily continue production. So uh, if they're not listed on the website, that, that usually means that they're, they're gone, at least for this year. Warner saying, hey, Zach, great to see you streaming. Happy to have you here, Warner. Happy to be, be able to do this. Um, had to figure a lot of stuff out in a very short amount of time last week to, to be capable of even uh, streaming like this. Uh, and honestly, just uh, it's awesome to be here and to get to interact with everybody. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and draw my hand, which I can, uh, I don't have a ton of space. So let me look, I'm gonna put my hand over here for now. His giant hand size of five. All right, I got unstoppable force. So you, I can ready Hulk. Uh, and if I only use physical resources, which you'll see, that's the only thing in my hand. Uh, I get to draw a card. So I'm going to go ahead and definitely mulligan log draw because uh, I can play it for my discard pile. So no reason to have it in my hand. I do want to keep at least one physical resource. Um, not really. I don't, um, the vast majority of my deck is actually physical. So I don't really need to worry about that. Dropkick, I'm, I'm probably not going to play that. 
two cost for four damage and a stun. I actually am going to hold on to one of those. Um, I could hold Mockingbird instead. I, being able to stun him is good. Like having one stun is is great. Um, probably. really damage or stun. So I'm going to keep uh, drop kick because I'm in Hulk. Uh, thwarting is not really the, the way. So I'm basically just going to be going all in on damage. All right. Got a Hulk smash, uh, which <laughs> is a plus 10. That's kind of the signature of this. Um, and if you pay with only physical, it gains overkill, which there is a minion out, so that'll be pretty good. Oh, I also need to get tokens out. Ultron is at what, 22? Okay. Um... So it's kind of interesting. Uh, Unstoppable Force <clears throat> readies Hulk and draws a card. So it really only costs one. But Crushing Blow for one uh, does essentially the same thing, potentially better. Uh, although Hulk Smash, if I do Crushing Blow, I don't get a card back. That would give me a card back. Um, I'm going to go ahead and trigger uh, Bruce's ability, and I, you do get to see the card first before you decide what to discard, and that's that's kind of helpful. Not really, <laughs> unfortunately, because um, these are all only physical resources. So I guess uh, Hulk Smash doesn't require only physical. It's only if I want to gain the overkill. So if I don't care about that, that's actually fine. Uh, so let's see, if I Crushing Blow, Darian saying Ultron is a tough match for Hulk. Yeah, I think Ultron is uh, is is really good. Uh, Amon saying, are you running beat him up? Um, I'm currently not. It's on the short list. That would be a matchup dependent thing. I just wanted to see how it went for one game. Uh, without it, I want to see how quickly I can just burn him down. Just Ultron. Um, so I think, and I have to discard a card still. So I think this is the play. If I unstoppable force, I'll get a resource back. I can Hulk smash. Uh, I'm going to get rid of Crushing Blow. Retro Daniel saying, is energy still worth it in this deck then? Yeah, I think so. Uh, it still pays for Hulk Smash. I'm running into power in all of us, which is a, a wild, so it can be a physical, but um, I think with Hulk, you really, really need to get like at least two cards out that provide cards or resources of some kind. Um, so I, I, I do think that's just a critical piece of this puzzle. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and flip uh, to, to Hulky. Uh, we're gonna do... Uh, swing for three. So Ultron's going to go down to 19. Get the rest of my tokens out. Okay. Then I'm going to play Unstoppable Force using two physicals uh, to ready Hulk, and it's going to draw me a card. Mm. Now that's something. One of the downsides of Hulk, of course, I can't hold under my hand. So if I don't play it, it's gone. And now I have to basically decide, do I want a Hulk smash? Uh, or do I want to play a movable object? Retaliate one against all these drones is actually going to be quite incredible. So, or I can swing for 13. <laughs> oh, Hulk, why you do this? Um, I'm going to go ahead and play a movable object. I might regret that later. Uh, but I think Retaliate is going to be a useful uh, ability here. Okay, so then I'm going to go ahead and use Hulk to swing for three. And I won't attack the minion because I'm just going to end up retaliating off the board. Uh, already, we'll draw my hand size of four and go to the villain phase. So start of the villain phase, we're going to put one thread on. 
it only needs to get to three to advance, so that's not very much. And then uh, Ultron is going to interact with me. He's going to attack. He's a two attack. Uh, when he attacks with me, I put the top card into play, face down, engage with me as a drone minion. Till the end of the round, he gets plus one attack for each drone engaged with me. So he's at plus two. I have a four damage attack coming in, and I'm just going to take it. So it's four damage plus a boost card of two. So I'll take six. I have that plus four health. So I have 22 health, tons, tons of health for these things to chew through. And one will get retaliated into Ultron. Then each minion will attack me for one, uh, which I'll take, but they actually both get retaliated. So they'll get retaliated right off the board. Uh, is beat em up a physical resource? That's a big question for me on that front. All right, so pretty simple turn, honestly, um, given my hand uh, and what else happening here. I'm gonna pay two for a tenacity. I'm gonna swing with Hulk uh, using a skilled strike. So it'll just be five damage. Uh, and we'll be down to 10 health on Ultron. And then we'll pass and go the next round. What up, Daniel? Saying this is awesome. I just logged on. I'm excited to see Hulk. I haven't played with him much at all. Feeling discouraged by how weak everyone says he is. Anyone test him much? Oh, I forgot my encounter card. Uh, assault. Uh, he attacks me. So he attacks me again um, before I do everything I just did. So I'm just going to take it. So it's two. There's no drones. But I do get a third drone out. Uh, two plus two plus one, five damage. And he'll take one more. From retaliate. Uh, and then because of, uh, no, I think I got to deal one more round of this. Okay, uh, go ahead and draw back up. Got my lab and Ironheart. Not bad. And I'm actually going to put my discard pile up here, my deck over here. And over here. So this is in play. This is my hand. <laughs> what up, Tim? John says, hey, guys, how does this compare to Lord of the Rings? Um, <laughs> it's got some similarities, but it's also very different. Uh, Lord of the Rings and Arkham, to me, are more like watching a TV show, where this is more like a movie. OK. Uh, start of the round, we'll put one threat on, and then Ultron's going to attack, so we'll get a minion. And I'm at 13, I have 22. I am going to go ahead and block. For three, he's at four, five, six, so I'll take three. And do one back from Retaliate. Then I'll take two more from these minions, and they will go away. And then we'll go to the encounter card, which is repair sequence. He heals two damage for each drone minion to get its way. If no, nothing was healed, it gains surge. Android efficiency, top card, engage with them as a face down minion. And then it is back to us. Um, so I technically have the option with something like Tenacity to ready if I wanted to. Um, looking at my hand, I definitely want to get the lab into play. And then it can actually generate a resource. So but if I'm standing, I can heal for six and six. So I will go ahead and use Tenacity. Discarding a physical. To ready Hulk. And then I will 
go down to Bruce Banner. I'm gonna trigger his ability to draw. And I was hoping for a, it won't really matter. I'll go ahead and discard it. I was hoping for a double or uh, a double resource of, of any kind, honestly. Uh, then I'll go ahead and play Banner's Laboratory. And then I will exhaust to recover for six. Because I have no, no better alternative. Uh, start of the round. One threat's going to go on, so we're advancing. This is not going to last long. Assault on NORAD 2A. As you pursue Ultron, you receive a distress call from the North American Aerospace Defense Command in Colorado. They are besieged by an army of Ultron drones. Winter Village player puts the top card of the deck into play face down, engage with them as a drone minion, advance to stage 2B. If Ultron gains control of NORAD, he will have access to the United States Ballistic Missile Command. After placing threat here during setup, uh, step one of the villain phase, each player must either choose to place two threat here or to put the top card of the deck engage with them as a drone minion. Okay, and technically I'm ready at this point. Uh, then Ultron's going to scheme for two plus a card, two plus zero. And then the minions are going to scheme. And then we'll get my encounter card. Rage of Ultron, Alter Ego, he schemes. Discard the top card of your deck for each threat placed this way. Two plus two is four. Oh boy. <laughs> um, and then it'll be back to me. Uh, and I should have a hand at this point. All right. Let's go ahead and use Bruce's ability to draw a card and then discard a card. A little too late on these events. Hmm. Go ahead and discard that. So I can create one resource here. So let's go one, one to play a Marshall Prowess. Then I'm going to flip to Hulk. No. I'm going to recover for six. I'm going to flip to Hulk. I'll use uh, Martial Prowess and discard two to play a drop kick, dealing four to Ultron and drawing a card, which I can't play. So then that'll get discarded end of round. He's ready. And we'll draw back to our hand all the resources in Casterly Rock. Well, that'll be an interesting turn. We'll see how limitless Hulk actually is. Start the round. We're going to put one threat on, and then I have to trigger the ability, either two threat or uh, a drone, which I'll go ahead and do a drone. Ultron's going to attack me for two. I don't think I can exhaust on this one. This one. So it's going to be two plus uh, three is five, plus one is six. Oh, I drop kick, so he's stunned. Ha ha. Oh, it didn't let me draw a card at all. Oh, stun the enemy and draw a card. Great. Um, so he's stunned. He doesn't attack me. I don't get a drone. Then the drones attack me for one each, and they both go away. And then we go to the bad card. Advanced Ultron Drone, guard, when it is defeated, the, the engaged player puts the top card of the deck into play face down with them as a drone minion. Cool. Uh, then it's back to us. Great catch on the uh, stun. That is uh, helpful. Probably not going to be enough, but it's helpful. All right. Well, I will play Nick Fury. Um, spending five, unfortunately, uh, and I'll trigger the draw three. There it is. So 
I can basically suborbital and Hulk smash through, although I need to get rid of this guard first somehow. Because if he has guard, can I overkill through a guard? Tapeworm saying yes. Although he's only got four health left. So what I really need to do Interesting. So I can remove five threat, which is solid. I can also send Ultron packing. Or how much does good boy cost? Hmm. I have a free block here, so that's pretty good. Um, sure, sure. Let's suborbital, suboptimal leap using my limitless strength um, and remove five. And then I'm gonna go ahead and Hulk smash. 13 with overkill. So we'll do four here, four here. Defeat this stage of Ultron. This will get me a drone minion. So then old stage three is coming out. Each drone minion gets plus one attack and plus one hit point. Ultron cannot take damage while drone minion is in play. When revealed, search the encounter deck and discard power for Ultron's imperative side scheme and put it into play. Let's go get Ultron's imperative. Okay, um, so it comes in with two threat on, and the first one revealed the place, first player puts the top two cards of the deck into play face down, engage with them as a drone. I get a bonus encounter card because I'm out of cards. I'll use this for Hulk Smash. Oh, Marshall Prowess doesn't work. How about Hulk Smash? All right, let's think about this for a second then. So instead, Ultron is at four. Let's look at this. I believe this. Uh, Technically, this was on top, and this was in play, and this was on top. <laughs> Daniel says, Hulk Smash is not attacking you now because they made him so lame. PMK, why is Hulk like, the, like this? What up, Ryan? Welcome. Um, okay, let me think about this. So I can't use Martial Prowess. That just is a way worse card in the stack than I expected it to be. The Hulk magic. Um, so if this is still suborbital lead, remove five. Nick Fury is in play. I may as well. Hmm, there's the problem. So I can't suborbital and also Hulk smash. Hmm. 
Well, let's uh, let's just play this different then. I'll see what Hulk needs to do. I guess. Uh, <laughs> that's so bad. Um, I'm gonna put the five back. And okay, here's what I'm going to do instead. I'm going to play suborbital leap uh, using these three to remove five. I'm going to keep the limitless string. So this is going to get shuffled back in because we're not we're not going yet. Um, then Hulk will punch for three here. McFury is going to thwart for two. No, he's just gonna punch the drone. I guess it doesn't matter because it stays there. Yeah, he'll throw it for two. Stick him with my plan. Then I'm gonna flex down with Hulk and pass. So start the round, I'll put one thread on. And I will choose to get uh, a minion. Well, I guess I draw first. Get an encounter card. Mattis says, what's happening? Just came in and I'm confused. Playing Hulk solo against uh, Ultron right now. Uh, actually, you can't play Lockjaw when you flip uh, Yoda's hut because again, Hulk being Hulk, his limitless strength is only spendable in his hero form. Mem Memnark, uh, Hulk does not have a signature outline. Okay. Um, so threat went on. I decided to, that's my extra encounter card, get a minion. No. Let's not do that. I'm going to take two extra threat. And he's going to scheme for two plus three. We're advancing. Great. 3A. Each player puts the top card of their deck, engage with them face down as a drone minion. Advance to stage 3B. It gets to five. I lose. Uh, then we'll go one here. Clock's ticking. Uh, then we get our bad card. So I get one extra Hydro Bomber. Chase, choose to either take two damage or place a threat. Double Hydro Bomber. That's fun. Um, I guess I'll take four. Okay. Uh, then Nick Fury goes away. That was just uh, so bad. That was aggressively bad. Is what that ended up turning into. Okay, um, so technically, let's use Bruce Banner's ability to draw, to drop kick. Four and a stun. Does the stun carry over to his other form? T-Zag, are we dead yet? It's funny. 
Paint over to that. I'll keep that. I'm gonna draw a card. My goodness. Okay. Get rid of Uh, you can't do that, Amon, because uh, Limitless Strength is not playable in Alter Ego. He has limitations every way to Sunday. Okay. Um, well. This just went really bad. Shocker, I know. Uh, let's just take a chance. Flip to Hulk. Uh, let's swing with Hulk, because you got to, to get rid of this. And another drone comes out. And then let's drop kick into Ultron with uh, Limitless Strength, which will do four and stun him. So at least he's stunned as he advances to his next form. He's gonna be at 27 health. Okay, and he is stunned. Let's grab that stun. Uh, this is when I search my counter deck for Ultron's Imperative and put it into play, which I have no way of removing this turn. Must have been discarded. Where did it go? Amon, yeah, I, I could have done that. That makes more sense. Uh, yeah. And then I also draw from Dropkick. All right. And uh, now the drones are better. Let's go Unstoppable Force for two. I paid with only physical, so I draw a card. I ready. Um, let's use martial prowess to play a crushing blow. The damage to an enemy equal to my attack. So we're just going all in. I'm going three here, and then I'll swing with Hulk for with a skilled strike for five. So he's at nineteen. And then we'll end the round. So already, and I'll draw my hand. Thunderclap could be good. Hulk smash is really good. Um, it's gonna get me relatively close. Uh, Lefty saying Ultron can't take damage with drones out. Ah, uh, that's right. Uh, so he's at what? 27, let's go back. And, uh, then I guess I did three instances of damage. So we'll go one, two here. And then we'll do the five damage to Ultron. 
I do believe that is correct. Tapeworm saying this is probably the worst scenario for Hulk. Maybe it's possibly true and probably worth uh, worth trying. Let me actually see something really quick. All right, so I'm I'm actually kind of just mildly interested in seeing. I'm, I might do this again at least once. Um, all right, so first is a threat on. Then Ultron tries to attack and he fails. He's stunned. Then these guys each attack me, so I take two, and they each take one. Okay. Then it's back to me. Uh, bad cards. <laughs> don't don't forget about the bad cards. I get two of them too because that Ultron's imperative. Randover saying Zach's a masochist confirmed. Draw one upgraded drones. Each face down drone needs plus one attack and hit point. Uh, I can spend one of each resource type to get rid of it. And gang up. The villain and each minion engage with you attacks. Okay, well, Ultron's at four. Uh, there are no drones out. He doesn't generate drones anymore. So it'll just be four plus a boost card, and I'll take it. Four plus two is six. Two, four, six. He takes one from Retaliate, down to 21. But these guys attack me, so now I'm at, uh, I have to block one of these, actually. <laughs> ah! Uh, take one, send it back to him. And actually knowing that, I'll block the Ultron instead. So I'll cancel three of his damage. Let's get one, two, three back. And this attacks me for one more. And it'll also get retaliated off the board. Uh, then it's over to me. Hmm. Well, I can't go down to Alter Ego because he'll scheme out. So I just have to do as much damage here as I can. That could technically be free with prowess. And that's it. So yikes. Unfortunate. So I guess I will play, I'll pay four. Oh no, he's gone. I shuffled my discard pile. I was finally gonna use Lockjaw. Uh, <laughs> hmm. Well, uh, I'll thunderclap for three, send him down to 18 because I lose my hand. All right, then we're ready. And then we'll draw. Then it's Ultron's turn. So we get a threat. He doesn't generate any tokens. He's attacking for four, which would murder me. So I'll block. Uh, it's four plus zero. I'll take one. I'm going to retaliate for one into him. And then uh, we'll go to the next round because this is how it's going to go. Um, I guess I can't even effectively drop kick. I can get it down to one. Oh yeah, two encounter cards. Don't even forget about it. Invasive AI. Each player discards the top three cards of the deck. It's fine. Everything's fine. Comes in with three on it. Okay. Um, I'm going to do this. It's going to get a little spicy. I am going to 
Uh, use martial prowess to play a drop kick with the genius. So it's just going to do four damage. I did none bad cards that turn. We'll do a second one. And or deficiency. I get a I get a drone. So we drop kicked for four. And then I'm gonna actually flex down to Bruce Banner. We'll trigger my ability to draw a card and discard one. Uh, doesn't really matter. I guess I can't do what I was planning on doing at all. I thought I had an extra resource. Uh, so I just lose. So I'm going to try that again, because I think I can actually do that. The The turn that uh, I, di I didn't, I, I couldn't basically play the uh, Hulk smash alongside uh, the, that, that turn was the turn where I think just my misunderstanding cost me. So we'll see. I'm going I'm to run that one more time before I switch to my spider goblin. Uh, scenarios and match out. All right, 22. Alan says, I think Hulk aggression in solo is bad. Uh, I think Hulk's just under the curve, period. But I mean, the fact that I felt like I was anywhere near close is. Uh, not that bad. We're just going to try that one more time. Ultron, uh, stage two, 22 health. You know him. You love him. 1A puts the Ultrons in play, and then I get a thing. Get a drone, shuffle these up, let's draw my hand. All right, so this is definitely different. Looking at my hand, um, I want a mulligan. I have tons of, of resources. I think I'm going to keep the mansion. And that's it, because none of this stuff is going to matter, and I'm just digging for resources. So we're gonna we're gonna draw four. This is better. All right. So my first turn, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and trigger Bruce's ability to draw a card, and then I have to discard a card. Do not think that's super relevant right now. So I'll go ahead and get rid of that. This uh, power in all of us is interesting. So if I use this, I get a card back. I can't play Fury. So I need to play Fury first. Two, three, four. Uh, three, four. I think I have to hold the mansion because if I draw any twos, I can actually get it into play. Or I could Iron Heart. Tough call. I'm going to play Nick Fury. Um, my hand will go over here using Power and All of Us, Skilled Strike, and Iron Heart. Uh, and I'll trigger his draw three. Okay. So. Basically, I have a free block. So I'm not going to get the mansion in play, but I am going to go ahead and these are over here. Play. A combat training. Then I'm going to flip to Hulk. Nick's going to punch the drone. Ooh. That was my movable object. Uh, Hulk is going to swing for four into Ultron. So he's going to go down to 18. 
And then end of round, this readies. I have to discard the mansion, draw my four. Okay. Uh, start of the round, I'll put one threat on. Ultron's going to attack. So it's going to be two. I get a drone, three. I'm going to block with Nick. Four, five. Thanks for playing. And then the drone's going to attack me for one. I do not have retaliate anymore. So that is going to make this a much more difficult uh, situation. I get my bad card and or deficiency. We're getting another drone. And then it's back to us. So this is actually, I also got this wrong last time. So I always think I want two thread on the Crimson Cowl so that when he schemes, he wastes a lot of scheme. But I waited till the second turn uh, where I forgot you add the default one. So we're going to add one and then he's going to scheme and all that scheme is going to go on and advance us to the next level if I'm in alter ego, which I think is what I want. Because um, I need to build to be able to curve out past him. So let's see. I think. I'm going to swing for four at something. I'm going to swing for four into a minion as much as I don't want to. Then I'm going to flip down. We're going to use my ability to draw a card. Then I can discard a card. Doesn't doesn't much matter. Uh, so I'll discard one. And then I'm going to actually just play Helicarrier for three. And then we'll pass to the next round. We'll draw our five. A lot of resources and a Hulk smash. Um, so we'll hope to draw something with Bruce's ability. If not, we'll just cry. Uh, gain a threat. And then Ultron's going to scheme for two plus one, three. We're advancing to the next stage. 2A. Each player puts the top card face down as a drone. Uh, advance to 2B. I'm already past that phase. Both of my minions are going to scheme, so we'll put two more on. And then we'll get my bad card. Advance. He schemes. Two plus two is four. It always seems to be the worst thing. Might not be true, but it, it feels that way. All right. Then uh, my turn happens. We'll use Bruce Banner to draw a card. It is a crushing blow, so I can at least use it. Um, which is not that bad. So that's kind of overkill. Man, just bad. Good to discard something. So I. I Guess we'll discard a two because I may as well. Um, then we'll flip to Hulk. I will Hulk smash uh, for three. So it's going to be 13. One's going to be on this minion. Oh, ooh, there's a lockjaw. That makes things interesting. Should have thought about that. Um, Yeah, may as well. I'll moment of triumph that. Uh, and there's a 12 damage going through to Ultron. So 10, 11, 12. Moment of triumph to heal the one damage that's on me. And then I will use my Helicarrier and these three to play a Lockjaw. He's a good boy. And then he's actually going to thwart the two so that we don't just scheme out very quickly. And what up, Van? Uh, you know, it's interesting. Like, he's down to six health. Uh, I feel like Hulk can move. And that's definitely not the ideal situ like sequence of, of cards that I just saw. There's another Hulk smash. So we could be doing a lot of damage here. And an unstoppable force. Let's just see. Hannah Jarn Bjorn. That's in there. Um, okay. Uh, start of the round. Uh, one threat goes on. 
And I have to choose either two more threat or put the top card engaged with me as a drone. Hmm. No more threats going on yet. Do I have a sub? Yeah, I do. Uh, I'll then do two threat. I don't, I don't have retaliate. If I had retaliate, this would be uh, pretty sweet. Um, then he's going to attack me uh, for two plus a drone, plus he gets a drone, four, and I block him with a lockjaw. So six, thanks for your service, lockjaw. Then the minions are going to each attack me, so I take two. And then a uh, bag card. Rage of Ultron. Ultron attacks you, discard the top card of your deck for each damage inflicted this way. So he attacks me, he gets a drone, he's at five, six, I'll take the six. Okay, um, and then I lose six cards. I have one card left on my deck, so that's fun. All right, well, interesting. Um, so I can buy myself some time with suborbital and I can keep one card flex down and I basically get one more go at this. So I think I'm going to keep Hulk smash. And I'm going to play, use the helicarrier to play sub orbital leap for five. We'll see. This is probably bad math, but you know, hold on. Um, then I'm going to swing for four. And I got to think about this. Let's swing for four into one of these drones. And I'm going to flex down. I'm not even going to trigger my ability. Uh, and we'll go to the next round. So one, I get an encounter card. I'll shuffle. A tapeworm said, I step away for a few minutes. You insane brutal. Yeah, it is brutal. Mm -hmm. All right, one threat on, and I either decide to get a drone or uh, place two threats. It's going to be two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I'll put two on. Uh, then he's going to scheme for two, three, four, five. We are advancing. Goes quick. 3A, count down to oblivion. Each player puts the top card into play. Did it. Gets the five, I lose. Um, and there's three drones, so it's going to immediately be at three. <laughs> Not good. And then we go to bad cards, which I have two. So first is upgraded drones. How about their three life instead of two? Rage of Ultron. Uh, schemes and I lose the game. <laughs> Tapeworm, rut row. Okay, uh, so I do. I if I if I really wanted to sit here and keep trying, I I think I can crack this puzzle. Um, I am going to switch to goblin and the spiders, but I I think that's possible. Um, so I'll I'll be uh, potentially revisiting that in the future in solo. Uh, solo verse. Hulk is definitely Hulk. There's no doubt about that. Let me grab all the standard expert cards. How, how's everyone out there feel about Hulk? Is anyone like holding on to hope and saying like, uh, I have found the way to do this?
Ryan says, uh, I think uh, for Solo Hulk, he wants to be in Justice. Uh, Alan's saying, go pure basic Hulk. It works great. <laughs> Amon saying, Hulk versus Rhino is more manageable. Tape saying, he's mostly fine in Standard. That I think that's undoubtedly true. We actually played him in Standard. Um, I, I was curious about that exact same uh, scenario. Alan saying, I've uh, been playing him all last week with almost entirely basic decks, heroic wins. Uh, what do you mean? Is that like all neutrals or uh, what do you mean by that? And are you beating heroic mode with Hulk? Dave Whitfield saying Ultron is tough for any non-justice leadership. Yeah, I agree. Like a single van, playing the van on that first stage and buying yourself four extra threat compared to seven is huge value. Even in two player, it was amazing value. I do think it's it's really fascinating because like he's threading such a specific lane, um, and like the even even the fact that I, most of his cards aren't attacks, so the stuff that makes attacks better don't work. Is is just tough. Alan's saying, I beat Heroic Claw, Ultron, and Kang with Hulk, with only basic card Hulk deck. I have four aspect cards I switch out for different things. For example, Hawkeye and Ultron. That's crazy. Have you posted that anywhere? I, I would be curious to try that. All right, let's read through uh, while I'm waiting on an answer. Let's look at uh, Green Goblin, the mutagen formula scenario. Uh, unleashing the mutagen stage 1A, Green Goblin 2 and 3, standard and expert cards. And then I added the Goblin gimmicks recommended uh, set. Uh, set up, put a Goblin Thrall minion into play, engage with each player, shuffle the encounter deck. And I'm going to start out with uh, Spider-Man because that's what I want to play. DMK saying enhanced physique seems like a must. Is that the one that stores resources for you? I could actually almost see that in Hulk because of his downside of discarding his hand every round. Just being able to pass resources to the next round could, could be a really great way for him to get out. But that's why like even the um, uh, power in all of us kind of card where it can be a physical or a two for the neutrals, you get two immediately instead of having to wait. You don't really gain anything with the physique card, I don't think. All right. Oh, this should go in. Retro is saying you should try a protection build with a new Quicksilver card. So I assume next time we play uh, two player, Steven's going to play Quicksilver. And I have a feeling he's going to be attracted to protection. Uh, but at some point when we do another serious go at a heroic villain, I do want to try Spider Man protection. Doesn't Enhanced Physique uh, cost you two PMK? So you play the card and pay two, which is spending three. Um, so you don't aren't really gain anything as much as just passing resources down the road. Also, uh, anyone in chat, I'm curious, have you played Hulk using uh, in, in three and four player? I feel like he would be actually totally fine if he had friends to help him draw cards. And then if he wasn't responsible for everything, like he has downturns that aren't great, but then he does have some upside that I think could, could pay out uh, in a three player scenario. All right, six hand size with old Peter Parker. Yeah. 
You always love to see a mansion. I am playing leadership, by the way. Wow, and Nick Fury. And a free resource with uh, Parker. Mm. And a swing web kick. All right, that's, that's an interesting hand. So as far as mulligans, I want to try to get Avengers Mansion in play. I think Nick Fury is crazy value. Um, so if I spend three or four, my resource here, plus three on Nick, then I'll have four cards back. And as long as I get a double, I can potentially play the mansion and the rapid response in the same turn. Um, so I'm actually going to mulligan these three to have a chance at like an absurd turn. So we'll see what happens. Oh, yeah. I need to read Green Goblin Stage 2. Win or reveal, deal two encounter cards to each player. Oh, that's fun. Force response after Green Goblin attacks and damages you, place a threat on the main scheme, two scheme, two attack. Um, so I mulligan three, I'm going to draw three, and I was really hoping to see, there it is, at least one double, and I got two, that gets even stronger. All right, let's start here. I'm going to play a Nick Fury for four. Don't let me forget about this uh, Peter Parker resource. Uh, when I play Nick Fury, I'm going to draw three. Enhanced body sense could be good given the number of encounter cards I'm about to draw. Um, so really, it, I'm going to get a keep four on a card. Um, so I may as well keep something I would hold on to. Probably enhanced body sense. So I'm going to use my free resource and three. Playing Avengers Mansion. Then I'm going to use the Avengers Mansion to draw a card. I got Miles Morales Spider Man. Um, is that right? Did I do that right? Yeah, three. Okay. And then I will go ahead and pay two for a rapid response. Then I'm going to flip up to Peter Parker. I mean, Spider-Man, same, same difference, right? And uh, Goblin should be 18 here. We're playing on expert, not heroic, worth, worth mentioning. What up, Billy? I am doing well. Happy to have you here, man. You know, Craig's saying, Iron Man is a good companion for Hulk. Hulk takes damage while Iron Man builds, then Iron Man boosts Hulk with cards and resources. That actually makes a lot of sense. I, I was talking about this before we got on stream with Bryce. One thing I'm really hoping we see in the future um, are more of those team-up cards that we got like the Ant-Man and Wasp pack and we're getting with Scarlet Witch and um, Quicksilver. But the idea of like some cards that are really good if you're playing Hulk and Iron Man or if you're playing either of them with the, the ally that is the same thing, um, I'm all about that kind of stuff. Like, uh, you know, if there was a cap Iron Man card, that's the beam going off the shield and you have to have them both in play to play it. I, I would love to see tons of those kind of cards in the future. Uh, William saying, did you use Peter Parker's resource? I did. I sure did. Um, I'm gonna, I have to, uh, Goblin Thrall, I'm gonna punch for two. Uh, he's got guard and we'll punch with Nick as well um, to get rid of the Goblin Thrall. And then we're ready and go draw back up. So one, two, three, four, five. Webbed up in solo is crazy value. Um, yeah, crazy, crazy value. All right, so start of the turn, we'll put one thread on, like you do. I've got some pumpkins coming in here, a glider. Uh, then he's going to interact with me. I'm going to block uh, with Nick Fury. So when he attacks me, I draw a card, actually, because of Spider-Man being glorious. Um, so I'm going to block with Nick Fury. He's at two plus one is three. So Nick's going to go away, but I'm actually going to trigger rapid response to bring Nick back into play uh, with one damage on him. And when he comes into play, he's actually going to draw me three cards. So we're going to have a wild uh, turn coming up. 
And then I'll get my one encounter card, and he obviously dealt me two extra to begin with. That's right. One B should be face up. One B, when completed in player order, each player not engaged with the goblin minion must discard three cards from the encounter deck and put the first goblin minion they discard this way into play and engage with them. First, we get the goblin glider. Spend two lightning resources to discard it. Attach the enemy with the highest printed hit points. That'd be goblin, uh, who doesn't already have one. I see you when revealed goblin attacks you. If you're an alter ego form, do not give the villain a boost card for this activation. So he's going to attack. I'm going to block with Nick. When he attacks me, I do. I get to draw a card. Enhanced body sense seems good. It's two plus or uh, three plus a boost. Four, five. Nick doing some serious work for me there. And then finally, we get Goblin Nation. Uh, each goblin enemy, including Green Goblin, is plus one attack. Uh, and it comes in with two threat on it. Oh, the main scheme does start with two on it. So it's at three. And it only needs to get to seven to advance. So not that much. Uh, Ryan, it's he only doesn't get a boost card if I'm in alter ego, which I'm not. I'm in uh, hero form. Okay. Um, I actually built this deck. Man, this is a crazy hand. <laughs> Just crazy town. Um, so technically, I do have... Do I have? Yeah, I, I'm not going to use Black Cat on that, though. Hmm. Uh, let's start with the mansion. Drawing a card. Hmm. Webbed up again. Um, things I definitely want to do. I want to get Black Cat out. I could technically make the call for Nick Fury. That's interesting. Let me see if there's better allies here. Um, probably not. I like that a lot, actually. So let's let's start with Black Cat. I'm going to play a Black Cat because she has that response. Um, Spider Tracer is not going to do anything for me, so there's one of them. And then I'm definitely not playing two webbed ups, so let's go ahead and use a webbed up. And then she says, uh, discard the top two cards in my deck. Put anything with a mental resource into my hand, which is both. I put a lot of mentals. I, I was paying attention to that, actually, for this exact reason. And I got another rapid response, which is going to be amazing because I think I can make the call Nick in and do the whole rapid response thing again. Um, so let's just start heading that way. Uh, let's go four for Nick Fury or for make the call into Nick Fury. And I'll trigger his draw three. I got a bunch more make the calls. So that's something. Um, and then I don't exactly need to web that because I have the free block here with Nick Fury. So I'm going to play a web shooter, a web shooter. They have three on them. And I will use um, these to play a rapid response. And then I will punch for one with Black Cat. I will thwart for two with Nick to remove Goblin Nation. And then I will punch for two damage with Spider-Man. Um, let's go ahead and Inspiring Presence to ready Nick and heal one. Then I'll swing for, oh, I'll actually remove two threat. And he has one on him. This will go away. And then we'll go to the end of the round. So I'm going to have another crazy turn. Spider-Man's crazy. Spider-Man leadership is also just insane. Ryan Orber says, seems like here I'm going to mulligan for the chance that an absurd turn paid off for sure. I mean, I, I think that's part of um, just understanding of this game is like 
create as many of those moments that could lead to the just absurd turns. Um, Cause sometimes you, the fact that I got three cards back with Nick that last turn, got to use him, got to block twice with him, got three cards again. And then I'm doing it again. It's just like the acceleration that happened because of that is just really uh, insane. Um, okay. So I'm going to draw back up. And size of five. And all those attacks happening in the first round with Spider-Man and the ability to block them, it's just drawing me cards. So uh, it's pretty amazing. Um, first step, we'll put a threat on. Second threat step, he's going to attack me. When he attacks me, I do get to draw a card. Swing web kick, thank you very much. Um, and I'll go ahead and block with Nick. So he's doing two, three, plus special. Ooh, Goblin Soldier comes into play. Um, doing three, so Nick's going to go away. I will trigger rapid response to bring Nick back into play uh, with a token, and I draw three. There's Aunt May. Don't even necessarily need her. Uh, so then at this point, Nick's going to go away at the end of the round. I'm going to go ahead and block the Goblin Soldier. Um, you know what? No, I have an enhanced spice. I will block with Nick, uh, so I won't take one. Then we go to the encounter cards. I draw one. We get another Goblin Soldier which is fun. Uh, and then, and they have five health. Wow. Hmm. Uh, Nick's going to go away. Those are crazy little uh, units. I haven't seen those very much because we've only played this scenario a couple of times. Alan's saying, aside from Black Cat, you could mostly do that with Hulk too. <laughs> yeah, uh, to a certain degree, I guess. So start of my turn, let's go ahead and draw a card. Uh, got another swing web kick. Interesting that none of the neutrals uh, to be able to play, use those power in all of us, uh, which is fine. So he's at what? Um, just looking at what I can do here. Black Cat can go several times. I almost need a better, a two inspiring presence. You almost want a more powerful ally happening here. Um, let's see, we're doing a swing web kick here with my free resource in here. So I can spider tracers, Aunt May, hold on to that. Okay, let's do this. I'm gonna go ahead and attach a spider tracer here. I'm gonna play an Aunt May. I'm gonna use one of these resources to swing web kick for eight um, into Green Goblin. So eight, five, so you should get seven. And then I'm going to do a swinging web kick into this soldier. Spider Tracer's triggers removes the threat. Um, and then Spider Man is going to go ahead and punch uh, this Goblin Soldier for two, Black Cat for one at three total damage. And then Let's go ahead and flip down. And no, you know what? I'll take some damage. I'm going to stay here because I'll draw when he attacks me. So one, two, three, get an encounter card. I do take a damage uh, when that other goblin soldier went away. What up, David? She says all's fine when she's making snacks. All right, uh, then we'll ready everything. I get one more card. There's rapid response again. Could be fun. Um, then we'll put one thread on. And Green Goblin will attack me, so I will draw a card. Oh, wrong, wrong deck. Kind of double. Okay. Um, 
And he's attacking me for two. If he damages me, we'll get a threat. He's at three, actually, because of uh, the glider. I'm just going to go ahead and block. And so three plus one and an additional boost card. This is Intimidation. Ooh, into a Goblin Knight. Uh, so it's plus three. So I'm going to take three. And we'll put a threat on. And then Goblin Knight gets shuffled back in. <laughs> Tapeworm testing. You testing over in Discord? Yeah, there's a watch party channel on our Discord channel uh, that's getting all the chats and you can chat from. <laughs> Dean, you know, that's actually totally right. I'm probably going to do that this next round. Um, OK, uh, so then the goblin uh, soldier is also at two, so I'll take two damage from that. And then I have one bonus encounter card plus a card. Monster, when revealed, you are stunned. If you're already stunned, take two damage. So I'm stunned. That's fun. Uh, and then we get pumpkin bombs. So nothing to cancel even. I've been holding on to that uh, enhanced spidey sense for just nothing. Uh, all right. And then we're back to me looking at some basic stuff. So let's start with a draw card, of course. And then may as well. I'm going to play an Iron Heart using my genius. After a player, I can draw a card. And then I'll go ahead and use my two resources here as wilds to get rid of his Goblin Glider. Theme. Um, Ant Mage there. So. Let's go ahead and play. Maria Hill. Maria Hill. For two, and I draw a card. <laughs> Dean, A plus play. Uh, I'm on saying I'm new to Arkham. I'm going to be watching your streams. Where's a good place to start? So I, I'd probably do like the Carcosa cycle. That's that's where our production values were up a little bit, and it was a great story. Um, technically, the getting started or the real Arkham horror that we started last March is our first campaign. Um, but I think we got better at the game and the rules, and our technology got a lot better by Carcosa. So that's probably a good place to, to hop in. Um. Let's go ahead and punch for two total on this goblin soldier. Get rid of that. Take a damage on Spidey. Uh, and Ironheart's taking a consequential. Maria Hill is going to just thwart for two here. And then I'm going to flip down to Peter Parker. Use Aunt May to heal four. She's so good. And then I'm going to use my free resource from Peter Parker to play a Helicarrier. I'm just going to hold on to that rapid response uh, going into the next round, because that's fine. So we're ready. Everything. Draw up. Um, and then we go to the villain phase. So we'll go one thread on. Then he's going to scheme for two, two plus one, so three. And then monster is going to trigger for one. And then we get one bad card, which is a goblin thrall. More minions. And then we're back around to me. 
it's crazy how fast solo goes honestly uh i feel like i'm constantly expecting to have to just like wait um but it's not happening so you just kind of turn and burn uh dean saying watching campaigns before you play them in arkham is tough since so much of the game is blind uh playthrough yeah i mean i'm on i i spoilers are a bigger deal in arkham for sure um so i would watch a video to learn how to play maybe of a campaign you're not going to play then i and a lot of people will uh, we've we've seen heard from a lot of people who will basically play a scenario and then watch us play it after they've played it to see if they got anything wrong or if we got anything wrong that's been super helpful and also so it doesn't spoil anything but you also get to kind of live the story side by side with us all right uh first thing that's just a avengers mansion for a card there's miles morales he's good um I'm going to go ahead and use my free resource and my helicarrier to play a rapid response. She's Aunt May to recover. Let's flip up to Spider Man. Let's attack to remove the stun. Let's thwart with Maria Hill and trigger rapid response so she comes back in with one damage. And I get a card. And then how often do I want to do that? Let's punch for one with Iron Heart. She goes away. And then let me do the math on this. Let's thwart for two with Maria Hill. And then let's play Spider-Man, Miles Morales version. After he comes into play, choose thwart or attack. He gets plus two to the chosen stat until the end of round. Um, so he's now at a four. Uh, I'm gonna choose attack, four attack. Uh, I'm also gonna pay two for Squirrel Girl. So we're gonna do one. One, this is an attack, so Goblin will even take it. And then Squirrel Girl is going to punch the monster for one. Miles Morales is going to punch the monster for four. So he's going to go away. And then Black Cat is going to punch the Thrall for one. And we are set. So that's the end of the round. Everything ready. I'll draw back up. I do love webbed up. Backflip's pretty good here, too. OK. Uh, one threat's going to go on. Then Goblin is going to attack for two. I'll go ahead and block with Squirrel Girl. So two plus one. I love that art on Wicked Ambitions. Squirrel Girl's gone. When he attacks me, I get to draw a card as well. OK, and then bad cards. Oh, wait, uh, Pumpkin Bombs hits. Two indirect damage. Um, I'm just going to take that on Spider-Man. And Pumpkin Bombs is gone. OK, and then bad card. Goblin Soldier, seen it before. I'm getting tired of you. Uh, all right, it's my turn. Let's go ahead and draw with Avengers Mansion. Okay, powering all of us, not exactly lighting it up. Um, uh, Retro Daniel is saying, doesn't Indirect have to be spread around or am I wrong? So Indirect, you just get to assign as the player taking it. It can go anywhere you want. Apostles Demo uh, saying, greetings from Greece, Zach. Are you still playing Legend of the Five Rings? If not, why? Um, haven't played in a long time. Ultimately, two things happen. 
Uh, one, that game is very dense and it takes a while. Uh, we, in our learning series, we talked about this a lot, where like this is for us the kind of game that you'd want to sit down and play uh, a game or two of uh, once a week or once a month. Um, the second thing that happened is their, their first six packs in six weeks um, is, uh, Daniel, it's not just damage because if you took two damage, you would have to take two damage in a single place. Indirect means you can spread it however you want. Um, anyway, so uh, they did the six past six weeks. One of those packs came out on like Thanksgiving or the day after. Um, and I just got behind and never caught up and felt like I, I wasn't uh, able to keep up. And um, also Destiny came out. So my interest just went elsewhere. And then after we, I was a year or two behind, it was just uh, too much of a mountain to climb for me to get into that game. All right. Let's do this. I'm gonna do three to the thrall. Spider-Man's gonna punch and Spider-Man will end up taking the damage. Thrall's gone. And then, oh, and before I do that, I'm gonna attach a spider tracer to that thrall to remove this threat. And then I'm gonna go ahead and use the helicarrier and we'll attach a webbed up to our friend, Gabi. And that'll be the end of the turn. Now, do I wanna go down? He can't attack this turn. And scheme is not exactly what I want. So I'm, I'm gonna stay here. Uh, so we're gonna draw. Okay, not bad, not bad. Uh, start of the turn, put one threat on. It is pretty amazing. I feel like I'm really capable of controlling Green Goblin with Spider-Man at this point. Uh, he had, oh wait, I had this card as well. I had a floating card. Wouldn't have much mattered. So I'm just gonna discard it because it's fine. Um, one threat on, he tries to attack, he fails because of webbed up. And he's now also stunned. Let me go to the bag cards. Uh, caught off guard, discard an upgrade or support I control. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, enhance Spidey Sense this. Pay one. and pay one here because I do not want to get rid of an upgrade or support. Not happening. All right, uh, then we're back to me. So let's go ahead and mansion for a card. There's Nick Fury. That's just great timing. Nick Fury for four, draw three. Uh, you can't use the helicarrier to make the spidey sense cost one less because it's an action. You, you can only do that on your turn. Um, let's go two, four, five. All right, we're going to go two damage with Spider-Man, Miles Morales version, two with Nick, two with Spidey. Stun's going to carry over. We're going to stage three. Green Goblin stage three, two attack or two scheme, three attack. When revealed, deal three encounter cards to each player. Oof. Forgot about that. After he attacks and damage, you put two threat on the main scheme. 
Uh, thankfully, he is stunned. And I have Nick out. Um, and he's at 20. Okay, that's super reasonable. Um, so he's already stunned and I have a block, but I have a ton of encounter cards coming. So I think I'm gonna save the swinging web kick because I can play Stinger for one. Then I can play Ready for Action to give a tough status token to something. So I'm gonna give it to Stinger. I'm gonna save the web kick. And we will pass to him. Draw back up. Oh, three swing web kicks in one turn. Un, not ideal. Very much not ideal. But we'll we'll make it work. I guess if I can play two of those, I'm I'm probably home free more or less. Uh, start of the round. One threat goes on. And then. Uh, oh yeah, Black Cat should attack. There's no reason not to. I forgot that I hadn't attacked with him. Down to 19. Uh, he's going to try to attack, but he's stunned. And then I get my one encounter card, and we'll see what these four cards hold me, hold for me. Uh, Goblin Knight. Goblin Soldier, Master Plan, we're going to get a side scheme. Goblin Reinforcements, place one additional threat for each Goblin. There's three in play, so there's five coming on. And then a Goblin Thrall. Okay, uh, Nick's going to go away. All right, well, let's see what we get. I'm in a mansion for one. We get a bonus encounter card. It's free. Let's just keep it cool, you know? Uh, let's use a minus one and a two to play a Quinn Carrier. That's the power in all of us. Thanks, Cap. Oh, I got a bonus card, that's what it was. Um, and then I'll do one, two, three for a swinging web. Actually, before I do that, I have to get rid of the guard. Uh, I'll swing for two with Spidey here. One with Black Cat. It goes away. Then I'll pay three for the swing web kick for eight. Mm. Stinger sh should have tough, right? I, I think I swung with Stinger. So whereas I have seen Star Wars tease, and I'm excited about it. Um, let's just do eight here. So he's down to 11. And I think I'm just going to be safe. We're going to flip down to Peter Parker. And I'm basically just trying to finish the game off next round and taking a beating here. There's a double backflip. Would have been good to stay in Spidey, I guess. According to that math. Oh, I didn't use her last turn. OK, that makes more sense. OK, first thing is going to be a threat. Then Goblin's going to scheme for two, plus a special. He heals for two damage. Puts two threat on. 
And then we'll put one on from the soldier, put two on from the goblin knight, so it will advance. So 2A, as the cloud engulfs the city, those unfortunate enough to be caught in the vapors begin to shiver and shift, mutating into hideous goblin creatures. When revealed, advance to stage 2B. The goblin creatures serve green goblins every command. Stop green goblin before this, his monstrous mil militia overruns the city. X is equal to the number of goblin enemies, including green goblin in play. So it comes in with four per player. It's plus X every round, where X is equal to the number of goblins in play. So currently that would be three. Um, and that's really it. If we get to 11, I lose. So that flips. We've done all the schemes. We go to the bag card. They get one and a bonus one there. Regenerative healing heals X, where X is equal to double the villain's stage number. So he heals six. Ugh. He's almost back to full health. Waste of time. Advance. So he's going to scheme for two, three. My plan is falling apart. Then overconfidence. I'm an alter ego. So he schemes. <laughs> uh, he wins. <laughs> oh no. 11, the pain, the agony. Ouch. Yeah, PMK saying flip into Pete to lay low for a turn and finish it. Uh, that did not happen. That goes to 11, right? Yeah, I think I, I just lose because he schemes for four, which is fun. So I'm just going to see if I could have defeated him this turn for my own sanity. Um, draw a card here with a mansion. Um, heal with Aunt May because you may as well. Use my free resource on something. Attach there, flip. Um, use two and one for eight with a swing web kick, which I, I don't even know. I can't win. So I'd be 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Out of his 19, he'd be down to four. I can get him down to four that round. Still not winning. So I think in hindsight, because I had a tough ally and a um, uh, a tough ally, so like his attack is not going to matter so much, and I had the health to deal with it, um, and I would get cards uh, from that side. I, I easily would have won if I had just not let him go wild on a turn. Um, and I think the turn, I guess when three encounter cards are flipping, in my head, going down avoids the attacks but really uh if he gets a lot of the scheme stuff all in a row that's that's a problem let me grab so i'm going to switch out my obligation we're going to play it with spider woman once before we get out of here Ryan's saying it looked really good until those last two turns. Yeah, I, I think I just uh, easily could have could have won that. Um, it's it's kind of crazy, like what you your frame of reference for like what's possible in terms of you winning or losing in a game uh, seems so different in solo versus two player. Ewan says, oh, wow, that went south really fast. It did. Sure did. All right. So we shuffled Goblin back up. Let's go back to 2A. Our 1A gets me a Goblin Thrall. And it comes in 2 on it. Ryan Rober saying solo is so scheme dependent and bag card flips, uh, you just lose. I did indeed just lose for that very reason. But I mean, there's there's got to be a that risk, right? I mean, I, I think it's important for that risk to exist.
swap them cards out really quick. I had cards in my Spider-Woman deck that were in my Hulk deck and cards in my Spider-Man deck. All right. Alan saying Spider-Man should be blocking more and not draw back to alter ego. Uh, Solo has spikes on switch back to alter ego with, can, without confuse effects. Yeah, I, I can definitely appreciate that. Um, the, the numbers are just so low that it's so easy for them to spike. William saying you have the backflips in hand and no need to flex down to Peter. So I didn't have the backflips in hand until I drew back off. If I knew I was going to get two backflips, it's an easy decision to just stay up in uh, Spider-Man. John saying, it's one of my uh, few design quibbles. Solo really marginalizes how much you get to play around with the hero alter ego dy flipping dynamic which is one of the most interesting parts of the game. Amon asking, if you lose an Arkham, do you just restart the entire campaign? You don't. So in most cases, Arkham is what is known as a fail forward uh, campaign. So if you lose, it, there's penalties for losing, but you still gain experience uh, when you lose. So you still gain something. And uh, usually how good or bad it goes just affects the way the story turns out. There are exceptions. Sometimes you go insane or die. It's a real thing. Yeah, uh, I think in Solo, that, that, that is maybe totally right, which is like flexing down to alter ego is actually so risky um, because proportionally there's so much threat going on when you're down that it doesn't really make up for the what you're avoiding. Like just by not going down what you're avoiding. And I almost think because there's only one attack that you kind of in solo, I'm sure it min maxes this way. You kind of need to just play an ally. You have to have an ally to block the attack. And then if you don't go down, you basically mitigate the villain every round. John Steinbeck saying in multiplayer, you can stagger hero alter ego flip strategically. Totally. I think that's one of the, the most important uh, aspects of that for sure. All right. Let's play some Spider-Woman before we get out of here. Draw my uh, six. All right, a few things of note here. Um, I do have Ironheart's good, uh, getting to draw a card. Chase them down and when I start with a Goblin Thrall and two Threat and Play is actually kind of an ideal, plus it gives me my boost. Uh, Technically, a skilled strike would also give me a boost, but it, it only one of those can really happen. Uh, press the advantage is not going to be super good right now because I don't have anything confused. Inconspicuous, uh, not necessary if I'm playing chase them down, but if I play skilled strike and inconspicuous, that's going to be plus two. Um, so I actually like that better than chase them down. Um, and I only need to move two threats. So I think that's good as a justice card. So I'm definitely playing Ironheart because uh, she lets me draw. Spider-Man's really good, uh, but I don't think I'm going to be able to play him uh, at this point. So I'm going to go ahead and mulligan these three and keep these three. Uh, Agro leadership. Yep, that's right, Ramon. So I got another skilled strike and a Mockingbird and a press the advantage. So I think my first place to start is going to be, uh, let's use Jessica Drew to look at the top of my deck. And I have two encounter cards, don't forget it. 
I definitely don't want that now. <laughs> uh, so maybe the better play. Yeah, let's do that. So he's at 18. Um, I'm going to flip to Jessica Drew, or to Spider-Woman. Uh, I'm going to play a Mockingbird. No, no, not doing that. Let's play an Iron Heart. I'm going to go ahead and draw the card as much as I don't want to. Then I'm going to play an Inconspicuous to remove this threat and get plus one to Spider-Woman. What up, Locator? Uh, and then I just got to punch Goblin, don't I? He's got guard. Oh, that's worse. Fine. Uh, I'm going to swing at the Goblin Thrall, playing a skilled strike. It's giving me plus one for the round. And enough damage to defeat him. Ironheart's going to go ahead and punch for one. And I'll hold that other skilled strike for next round. So we'll draw back up. Okay. Uh, start of the round, we're going to put a threat on. And then Goblin's going to attack. Uh, so I'll go ahead and block with Ironheart. So he's two. Three, she gone. And then we go to the encounter cards, um, which I have three of. So first we get overrun. When defeated in player order, each player must uh, discard two cards from the encounter deck and put each goblin minion discarded this way in play. Comes in with one. We get an advance. So it's two plus a card. Goblin throw all coming into play. One, two. And then we get another Goblin Thrall. So that's just going to make this a slow, slow burn kind of game. Uh, these tokens go away. And let's see what we're going to do. Hmm. Well, let's see how bad this gets. I'm going to thwart for one, get rid of overrun. Discard three. Oh my goodness, two. Ugh. Not good. Let's use uh, self propel glide to ready Spider Woman. I have Ariel technically. Um, That is a lot of heat. What up, Aaron Clark? Well, this is interesting. Uh, let's go ahead and deal uh, swing with Spider Woman with a skilled strike. So she'll get plus one, plus two, four damage to the goblin. Uh, Soldier. I just got to make it out of this. Obviously, all those encounter cards uh, is tough. Then I'll press the advantage for one, uh, dealing two damage to one of these thralls. And I will stay right where I'm at. Draw five. OK. Um, one threat on. Goblin's going to attack me. That's bad. Uh, block for two. He's doing two. And another goblin thrall, my lord. Uh, then I'm taking one, two, three, four, five. 
from my friends. And then uh, bag card. Under fire and under fire. Yep. Regenerative healing. Heals X equal to double his stage. So it's four. He's going to go back up to 18. Regenerative healing again. Gain surge. Overconfidence. Attacks me. Oh, Lord. Two. Just two. And we'll put a threat on because it is a trigger. Anthony's saying it seems like a lot of enemies. It is a large number of enemies, unfortunately. Hmm. Yeah, there's no way out. I'm uh, I'm gonna restart this one. That went very poorly. All right, let's try to win one before we're done. So I've got uh, you see I have the sky cycle. The one of the things I'm doing in the deck, obviously the Captain Marvel ally is ridiculous. Um, and so I have uh, two of the what's it called? Let me find. Call for AIDS, uh, and she's my only Avenger. So it basically guarantees I can go get her, uh, and she's she's uh, a decent chunk of the deck. Uh, I have three or four upgrades that go on her specifically. Ewan says, you're having a rough go of it today. Uh, Ryan Rober saying, welcome to the Marvel Champions Get Clobbered stream. That's right. That's how you learn, right? That's how I learn, at least. Uh, it's just straight up through experience. <clears throat> And solo again. That's that's part of what's crazy. Is like, it's definitely its own little ecosystem of like valuations and whatnot. I remember forever people were telling us how important um, downtime was, and we just weren't believing it. Even this, like this Captain Marvel uh, style of Spider Woman deck uh is way more like easier to pull off in two player because you have a an, a teammate that is uh, helping smooth out the edges while you're trying to get it going and also um you're not basically just counting on you to do all of it alan says sadly kang uh has a card which gets rid of captain marvel and it makes me sad yeah kang kang will mess with just everything going on in the game. All right, so stage two, deal two cards. We start with two threat. Draw our hand. We did get, uh, where's that? Call for aid. Also pheromones is just insane. It's an insane card. Uh, so I will be able to definitely go get Captain Marvel, right? And that's that's worth realizing. And then I can basically pay for for her, and she'll go and I'll draw a card. Um, so if I'm holding at that point, as an example, I like can inspire in presence. But I'm going to hold pheromones as well, just in case I get a two. Um, so I'm going to discard these three, and I'm just looking for resources. Didn't get any, but I did get a sky cycle. So that's going to actually be even better than Inspiring Presence. So I'm going to start the game. Let's go ahead and uh, flip. I'm going to use Call for Aid. Discard cards from my top of my deck until I get an Avenger ally. We're going digging. Wouldn't it be funny if Captain Marvel just wasn't in here? That would explain things. A lot of cards. Come on. There she is. <laughs> then I'm going to pay for for Captain Marvel. Then she'll go ahead and thwart for two. When she does, I'll draw a card. Then I'm going to play a sky cycle on her for one. 
Ready or with Sky Cycle. Attack for two. Draw a card. Um, and there should be a Goblin Thrall, right? Somewhere. I should have started with that in play. Um, so he has Guard. So technically, I have to do two there first. And actually, let's do two there, ready. Play the Sky Cycle. Do two here. Draw a card. I drew a card to play. Um, and then I'll swing for one. Two. Yeah, there should be two on Captain Marvel. Um, so basically, two, one here, chase them down to remove these two. She technically gets plus one. I play the leadership card plus one. Um, and then I think there should be two here is the ultimate math of that and the goblin thrall is gone. Okay, uh, then technically we're ready and see if we can weather this storm. Yep, there's another encounter card because why not? Uh, We'll see how this goes. All right, not going to be the best. Uh, I could go rough, honestly. So one threat on, then Goblin's going to attack. Um, I will go ahead and block for three. So he's two, three, four. I will take one and put a threat on. Then we'll resolve my pile of uh, cards here. Assault, attacking me. So two plus one, three more damage and another threat. Pumpkin bombs, goblin thrall. Oh no, gang up. The villain each minion attacks me. <laughs> um, what's my health? 11, we'll just take it. So two goblin soldier plus the pumpkin bombs, four plus two more, we're at 10. And that'll be all of my encounter cards. Yikes. Alan's saying, wow, you have the worst luck. Got to be able to play around it. Um, all right. So pheromones is helpful. Save that, I guess. So we'll attach a power gauntlet here. Play a pheromones. We'll stun and confuse Gabi. Flip down, not ideal, and then we'll pass. Yeah, I think I just lose. Because I don't have nearly enough healing. I have, I have to use the bombs. No, uh, no choice. Okay, one threat on. He tries to scheme and he fails. Uh, these guys do scheme, so it's gonna go up to six. And then we get a bad card. Regenerative healing, he'll heal for two. Back to me. Let's go ahead and recover for three, bad as that is. And then let's flip up. Let's 
Let's go ahead and try this. I'm going to inspire in presence to heal the damage from Captain Marvel. Then I'll use Captain Marvel. On something. I have a five here. Let's go ahead and use Captain Marvel to thwart for two. And deal a damage to an enemy. So we'll do one here. I get a token as well. Says power gauntlets uh, deals one. What up, Tanner? Yeah, this is a last minute, made it work from home before we got hit by an ice storm. <laughs> um, and then I draw a card. Okay. Um, that's something. Let's go. Oh, and I thwarted for two. Venom Blast for two. We'll do five uh, to the Goblin Soldier. Take one. It's an aggression card, so I'll get plus one for the round. And then I played leadership and aggression, so I'm plus two. Um, Go self propelled glide to ready. And now I'm at plus three. So I'll go ahead and punch for three. And uh, we'll go back around. I'm actually going to go ahead and discard this because I'm just looking for first aids at this point. It was a first aid. It will be good. Uh, all right, first things first, one threat on. And then he tries to attack me and fails because he's stunned. Pheromones, MVP. Uh, then we go to the bag card. I will get a goblin soldier. Seen you before, tired of you. I also drew that press advantage right as uh, he's no longer stunned or confused. How about that? Um, let's go ahead and use a first aid uh, on Captain Marvel. Clear that straight up. These go away, actually. Uh, so she's going to swing. Let me think about that for a second. She can do two, three, two, one. All right, yeah. So we'll swing for two on this goblin. I'm going to trigger the power gloves to do an extra one. And I'll trigger the her ability to draw a card. Ooh, we got another first aid. We'll use the Sky Cycle to ready Captain Marvel. She'll punch for two more here, clearing that. So I do take a damage. I will draw a card from her ability. And I will trigger the Power Gauntlets to do one to Goblin. OK. And I have played no Aspect cards, but that's fine. Uh, And I, when that uh, goblin leaves play, I will chase them down to remove two threat and give me plus one. Definitely going to first aid. Am I? I think I'm going to save first aid for next round. There it is. Uh, let's play a con Containment uh, immunity for two. So I'm going to heal three and get a tough status token and get a plus one counter. And I'm going to save the first aid for next round. So let's go ahead and thwart for three. We'll go to the end of the round. Okay. 
Uh, start of the round, we'll go one threat on. Then Goblin's going to attack me. Uh, I will not block. I have that tough, tough counter. So two plus three, uh, my tough will soak it. Then we'll go to the bad cards. I get one bad card. Intimidation. Choose to either spend two resources, resources of any type or give the villain a face down boost card. Um, I think it's going to have to be a boost card. Yep. So he's going to get a face down boost card and that'll come into play next round. Uh, all right. Back to me. Um, there are no minions, so I may as well spend that. I'm going to pay four for Nick Fury here. When I do that, I will trigger to draw three. Okay. We will um, pay one for a first aid on Captain Marvel. Then Captain Marvel will attack for two on Goblin, and then a third because of the power gauntlets, and I'll draw a card. Then I'll sky cycle to ready her. Then we'll attack and do three more. And I will get to draw a card. And then we will play an inspiring presence for one to ready Captain Marvel and healer one, giving uh, Spider Woman a plus one token. So I will attack again for three more. He's going to go down to eight. And I get to draw a card. Um, then I will play a rapid response for two. You know, you've seen it, you know it, you know why I'm going to use it. Uh, Spider Woman will punch for two. Nick Fury will punch for two. We are down to four health on Goblin. And we'll go into the villain phase. So these are ready. And I'll draw five. Now we're now we're cruising. Uh, Aaron Clark saying, "Wow, that Captain Marvel focus is coming up huge right now." Yeah, it was it was a gambit. Uh, when I had to discard the number of cards and I got that extra encounter card on the first turn, I was getting nervous that uh, it was just going to be bad. But then it it got way better, and I have another first aid, so it's going to keep turning. Um, Retro Dennis says, TLDR, Zach loves building weird combo decks. You're not 100% wrong there. Um, all right. So, <laughs> uh, actually, you know what? I just realized where is my pop up? Well, too late now. All right. Yeah, I do need to draw an Inspired. That would make her significantly better at this point. Um, so one thread on. Then Goblin attacks me. I'll block with Fury. So it's two plus two is four. Nick would go away, but I'm going to trigger Rapid Response to bring him back and draw three. And then um, we will go. Oh, he gets an extra boost card there, too is a Goblin Thrall coming into play. Then I get one encounter card, Overconfidence. Uh, Green Goblin attacks you. Gain Surge if at least three damage is dealt by this activation. So I'm going to block with Nick. He's at two, three, four. Um, if Nick only has two health, can he deal? Is, does that gain Surge? Does someone who knows the rules understand how, what's going on there? I know we looked this up at some point uh, when we were playing this, but I, I don't remember the answer to that.
Uh, Phil, the Captain Marvel is actually uh, Spider Woman's signature ally, so it gains surge because uh, it enough damage could be dealt basically. Hysteria attached to Green Goblin when Green Goblin schemes or attacks give him an additional boost card. Uh, wow, the only way to get rid of it is to discard two mental. Okay, um, and then it's back to us. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pick up my hand because it's gonna be easier to see. Let's start with the first aid to heal two on Captain Marvel, of course. Uh, she's gonna punch the thrall for two, trigger a power gauntlet to do a third, and then I'll draw a card, which is a venom blast. So I do think I can pheromones for two. This could be a crazy turn. Uh, before I do any of this, let's uh, ready Captain Marvel. Um, uh, Retro of the Gloves are a leadership card. I, I don't remember which pack that came in though. So if I do pheromones, press the advantage becomes pretty good. So let's look at that. Let's start there. I'm going to play Pheromones. It's a leadership card, so I get my plus one token. And it's going to stun and confuse. My favorite. That's so good and so well. Uncomfortably good. Uh, then we will press the advantage for one, which is a uh, aggression card. So I'll get another plus one. Deals two damage, and I draw a card. Interesting. Iron Heart. Um, here's a question uh, for the rules people at home. Uh, if I swing with Captain Marvel for two, do the power gauntlets trigger after Goblin is flipped? Vegeta says, doesn't it say by checking the set icon on the card? What does the icon even look like? Hmm. So Power Gloves has a little ant on it. I assume it's ant man. And Sky Cycle has the Hydra symbol, which is probably Rise Red Skull. Ryan says that when a villain takes lethal damage, it flips immediately interrupting game. Okay, so I'm gonna swing for two with Captain Marvel. He's gonna come back. Going to stage three, 20 health. Need to, need to buy a bucket here. Deal three and counter cards to each player. Uh, and then now he's in play with 20 health. Then the power gauntlets are gonna trigger for one, taking 19. Regina says, well, time to die. Uh, and I get to draw a card from Captain Marvel. So then now I can Iron Heart, get a card back, self repose Glide. Let's go Iron Heart, draw a card. Then I will, I'm at plus two on Spider-Woman. So I'll swing for three. Then I'll self propel glide to ready. Swing for three more. Ironheart will swing for one. We're down to 12. Can't get too optimistic though. Every time I got optimistic in the past two games, I got dunked on. Uh, and we have three encounter cards, so that could go poorly, but he's, he's, uh, stunned and confused. So that's good. I'm going to go ahead and do I flip down? Here's the question. 
because he'd have to scheme a lot for me to lose. Edison saying go to alter ego. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking about it. I do have an iron heart block and he's stunned though. And last time that's exactly why I lost. But an extra card would be very helpful here. I'm gonna take the risk. I'm gonna flip down. Yeah, he's confused. That's, that's what makes this reasonable, I think. So I'm gonna draw three. And I got that inspired finally. Get a card because I need more. Inspired and inspiring presence. So I'll at least get one swing with her. PMK saying technical rules question. If you do excess damage to a villain on on a villain while he has uh, a stage left to beat, you don't do the extra damage to the next stage. Do you? You do not. So excess damage doesn't carry over, but it if the way Captain Marvel worked is I did the two, he immediately gets defeated. So you, it like interrupts the game. He flips to his next version and then Power Glove gets the trigger. Okay, so let's keep drawing. Another pheromones and a first aid. Oh yes, first aid inspired. We're gonna have fully realized Captain Marvel going into the end of this game. All right, so uh, first things first, one threat on. He's gonna try to scheme and he's gonna fail. Confused goes away. Uh, then we go to the bad card. So I've got four plus a bonus card here. So let's see what we get. Goblin reinforcements. Win reveal, place an additional threat here for each goblin in play. There's one goblin, so three is gonna go on. Goblin thrall. It's guard, so I'm gonna have to deal with you. Overrun, when defeated, uh, in player order, discard two cards and put every goblin minion in play. So it comes in with one, terrifying. Under fire, surge, reel the top card of the encounter deck. So we'll get two more cards for fun. Why not? Goblin thrall, goblin knight, and goblin glider. All right, let's uh, let's see what we what we can do here. So I basically need to do six, 18 damage. And I'm gonna get to go with Captain Marvel three times. So that's three, six, nine, 10. Um, and if she's inspired, it's actually four, eight, 12, 13, a lot. Philip asking what sleeves is he using? Yeah, I'm using katanas. So those are on the website. Um, katanas and dragon shield mats are like similar category of quality for me. Um, I, I need to test dragon shield mats again now that I've been using katanas for about a year, but they're close. Um, let's do this. Let's play a first aid with my pheromones. Heal two on Captain Marvel. Northern Lights, this is just expert. Asking if I'm in heroic. So uh, let's go ahead and inspired Captain Marvel. She will do two damage to a thrall. The gloves will trigger. Oh no, she does three damage to a thrall. Um, the gloves will trigger and we'll do one damage to this thrall and draw a card. And she takes damage. And we'll sky cycle to ready. I'm going to go ahead and flip without even healing. Just went down for the card. Um, and then think about this. So I think I just punch with Iron Heart for one. Uh, 
Um, the power gloves are is a response. Um, I'm just gonna punch with uh, Spider Woman. One here could be doing this all wrong. Uh, then I will punch with Captain Marvel for three, four. So he's going to go down to eight. And I draw a card. And then we will play an inspiring presence, uh, getting a boost on Spider Woman. She has two. Uh, to ready and heal one. Then Captain Marvel will swing for four again, and I draw a card. And then I'll play uh, Taminate Immunity for two, healing three, giving me another counter and a tough status token. And she's technically at two. And then we're off to the races. So let's see what happens here. Uh, it's plus two, so two, three on. Then we go to attacks. Um, Goblin tries to attack, but he's stunned. And then uh, Goblin Knight attacks. And it gets rid of my tough. Then we get an encounter card, two encounter cards. Death from above, Green Goblin attacks with plus X attack where X is equal to the villain stage number. He's at plus three, plus four, plus an extra encounter card. Um, oh wait, I have a hand. All right, so I know I can get three, four damage in. So I'm going to block with Captain Marvel. Um, he's at plus three and an extra encounter card. So three, six, nine. Thanks for playing the game, Captain Marvel. Then Intimidation would really choose to either spend two resources of any type or give the villain a face down boost. We'll give him a face down boost. Go into the hero turn. We are... He has four health, so we're going to play a combat training. For two, giving me plus one and plus one from this, so I'm at three total. I'll play a press the advantage uh, to do two damage, and then I will swing with Spider-Woman to finally uh, win a game. Aaron Clark saying it should be two. Zach had plus one on Spider Woman from Inspired. I think I got the plus one. It's cool. I got there either way. Uh, Spider Woman's super fun. She's also just like super, super crazy. That Captain Marvel ally is like one of the craziest cards in the game, if not the craziest cards. It's right up there for me with Aunt May, um, just in terms of like how efficient it is. I do think um, it's crazy how not good going down and healing in. Uh, solo is like it's so much threat that gets added compared to how much the, the game needs to lose um it's 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 just a totally different ball game <laughs> uh alan saying clearly she kill stole from carol well hey uh that was super fun um as uh, even though it was rough i i do think that like it's kind of cool getting to see the the spread of uh, Hulk, Spider-Man, Spider-Woman. Um, I definitely think you just look at the basics of it. Hulk, as we've said every time, he just has restrictions every different direction. I am going to have to look up that neutrals only basics. Um, Hulk, someone was talking about earlier. They were saying they were doing really well with it, even in heroic. So anything that makes Hulk good is something I'm uh, I'm interested in. And I believe I'm going to check really quick uh with the tech team uh but let me see we're in a whole new world here <laughs> uh 
Tech team, uh, can you respond to chat? I just want to make sure you're there. That way we can get this intro uh, correct. Or the outro, more like it. Northern Lights Hands, why I like solo protection uh, so much. You really need, you rarely need to go alter ego. I, I imagine, especially with all that uh, healing that's available. Aaron Clark saying solo whole heroic. I believe it when I see it. Yeah, I'm I'm not uh, uh, I'm not I'm not thinking that is realistic, but I, I'll try it. Right, it depends on how long we get stuck at home like this. But um, it's definitely something I'll be looking at. Anything that can make Hulk decent. I, I think the neutral uh, cards make him better, and I think in a two or three player game he's fine. Um, so <laughs> I'm seeing your chats over there, production team. It's hilarious. All right, I'm gonna get out of here. It's been great. A uh, major shout out to everyone who's been uh, subscribing to Marvel Champions through us, buying the Cosmic Components, the boards and tokens I've been using today. We're gonna try to get those back in stock as fast as we can. You can sign up for a wait list for those products on the website. Um, really just amazing the support we've been getting since the start of the pandemic last year. And uh, it's the only reason we can do this. Uh, it's part of, part of why I was so adamant and excited to be able to do this even from home. Um, it's the least we can do. Major shout out to everyone for being here, everyone in the, the chat for helping with the rules and stuff. We'll keep looking at the stream uh, tech this week and, and trying to improve it, but this week will be solo. And then hopefully we're back next week and the weather's cleared out a bit, but stay tuned. We'll be posting the social and whatnot um, and we'll make it happen. So cheers for being here. Stay safe, stay warm out there and we'll catch you next time on a stream.